Welcome everyone, I'm Adam. In this problem, we're considering the case of a rotated coordinate system. Where we're taking our xy plane and rotating it entirely some angle theta and getting some new coordinate plane called x prime y prime. And what we want to do here is considering our point xy equal to 1, 3 and rotating the xy plane theta equal 30 degrees, what would be our corresponding point in the x prime y prime plane, namely the point x prime y prime. So what we can use is we have some conversion equations that we know. Namely, we know that x related to x prime and y prime. So x is equal to, say, x prime times cosine of the rotation angle theta minus y prime times sine of our rotation angle theta and y is equal to x prime times sine of theta plus y prime times cosine of theta. Okay, now what we can do here is start with the most straightforward way is plug in what we have and then see what we can solve for. So we know what x and y are. That's from the point 1 and 3. And we also know what theta is. And so we can see what we can do to find in a little bit x prime and y prime. So like we said, plugging in what we know, say into our first equation, x is equal to 1, and that's equal to x prime times cosine of theta, so cosine of 30 degrees, is root 3 over 2 minus y prime times sine of 30 degrees, or times 1 half. And the next equation, y, which is equal to 3, and that's equal to x prime times sine of theta, or sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 half, and plus y prime times cosine of 30 degrees, or root 3 over 2. So with this set of equations, what can we do? Well, we have two unknown values that we want to find, x prime and y prime, but we have two equations to work with. So one route to do this is to try and solve this system of linear equations. Right? And what we can do with that is we can multiply through one equation by a value, and then we can add the two equations together. And the name of the game is to try to multiply through one of the equations and get one of the variable terms to drop out with the given constant that we multiply through with. So if we look at, say, the y prime term, I see a minus y prime 1 half and a plus y prime root 3 over 2. So if I were to take this top equation and, say, multiply it all the way through by the square root of 3, namely with this term, that would give me minus root 3 over 2 with our positive root 3 over 2. When we add those, those will cancel out. That's why we chose this term. But let's go ahead and through and multiply it all the way through and add the things together and write down what we get. So root 3 all the way through over here with 1, we'll have root 3 and then adding, so root 3 plus 3, and that will be equal to, now root 3 times root 3 over 2, the root 3's will cancel, leaving us with just 3 halves. So 3 halves plus 1 half gives us 4 halves, or 2, so that's 2x prime. And like we said, we have negative y prime root 3 over 2 and positive y prime root 3 over 2. So these two things cancel with each other and we'll just give a 0. So now we have an equation with just one of the terms, x prime, and we can solve for that. Pretty simply, in fact, just dividing both sides by 2, we get root 3 plus 3 over 2 is equal to x prime. So at least the x prime coordinate of the new point we have is root 3 plus 3 over 2. Now what can we do to find y prime? Well, we know an x prime, so we can take this and plug it back into one of these equations in for an x prime and then solve for the remaining unknown y prime. Which one doesn't really matter? We'll pick the bottom one. So picking our bottom equation, we have, say, 3 is equal to, now in place of x prime, we're plugging in what that is, root 3 
plus 3 over 2 times 1 half. And then that's plus y prime times, say, root 3 over 2. Okay, now I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra and solve for y prime. First, taking a look here, if we multiply our root 3 plus 3 over 2 times 1 half, our denominator is going to be equal to 4. And we can kind of clear the denominators out here. If we multiply through this entire equation, say by 4, okay, that will get rid of our denominators and make our work a little bit simpler. So multiplying through 4 all the way times 3 gives us 12. And that's equal to 4 multiplied with this term. The 4's will cancel. And that will leave us with just the numerator, root 3 plus 3. And then 4 times root 3 over 2. The 2 will cancel into the 4, leaving us with 2, or 2 times root 3, y prime. So now we have an equation where we can solve for our y prime. <clears throat> so to isolate that term, we'll start bringing everything to the other side. So we'll have, say, 12 minus root 3, minus 3, and that's equal to 2 root 3, y prime. And then 12 minus 3 gives us 9, but we're going to divide through by 2 times root 3. So we'll have, say, 9 minus root 3 divided by 2 root 3, and that's equal to, say, y prime. So we're about there. We have what y prime would be equal to, but we can go ahead and simplify this just a little bit. Okay. So we're going to rationalize our denominator. We'll just multiply top and bottom by root 3. So that's going to give us, let's see, y prime will go this way. So multiplying through, we're going to have right, 9 root 3 minus, multiplying through on the top, root 3 times root 3 is 3. And in the denominator, root 3 times root 3 is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. And we can simplify that just one more. We can factor a 3 out of the numerator and the denominator, and the 3's will cancel. So that will give us, say, 3 root 3 minus 1 over 2. So there is our y prime. So let's go ahead and put this all together since we wanted a point. So all together, our x prime, y prime, is equal to the point where our x prime is root 3 plus 3 over 2, and our y prime is 3 root 3 minus 1 over 2. So there is our translated point. Thank you very much.